I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering and data analytics. In this episode, we return to our Microsoft Access playlist, and we're going to talk about how to use a subform. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a very simple orders form, and we're going to take the order items from the order, order items table, and we're going to make a subform so that when we're looking at that header record for each order, it's going to have a list of all the items on it. So without further ado, let's get to our Microsoft Access subforms. Okay, so for this example, we're using the same file that we've used in some other uh, examples. And as you can see, I've got, a, I've got an orders table here, and uh, it has a composite key. So uh, both order ID and division make up the, <clears throat> make up the key, which identifies each uh, row uniquely. Um, so it's a little more complicated than a, a simple example, but this will be good. So you can see in our order items table, um, we've got that composite key, the division and the order ID uh, also in that table. And as you can see, that table <clears throat> actually has a composite key as well. You can see that it has order ID and division, and then you'll add like a line, uh, a line number for that order. Um, that'll identify each each uh, row uh, for the order items. So we'll uh, use the form wizard and we'll create an orders table very quickly here. So just using the forms wizard, we're going to grab our orders table and uh, and we'll just grab all the data off of that so that we've got a simple columnar form uh, to display our orders. And there are there. There's our orders, and uh, you know it's kind of a messy form, uh, but you get the idea. There's nine records, uh, so there's nine orders, and that sort of makes up the order data that we'll be using. So from there, we can close that, and we're gonna we're gonna make another form. Uh, we're gonna make a subform, and this is the way that I like to do it. Is I like to make the subform first. Um, so we'll use the form wizard again. And this time we'll grab the order, uh, the order items, and that's the the table that has, you know, each of the toys that got ordered for that particular order. Um, so they might have taken two toys or three toys or whatever on that order, and uh, and this is where we'll see it. So we're making a, a tabular form this time. Make sure that you do a tabular form because that's going to make a list. And then, as you can see, if I just open the subform on its own, it's just a big list. And uh, you can see it has that order ID and division on it. It's got the order item name in there, the monster puppet, and the order price. And, uh, you know, in a real-world situation, you'd probably normalize out the, the, uh, the product and everything. But this is just for a simple example. Um, and uh, so what we'll do from there, now that we've got a subform, is we can uh, go to our orders form. We can open that in design view. Uh, this is the top level, and we'll sort of move things up and make a little bit of uh, space. And that's going to give us a little bit more real estate on there to uh, put our subform on. So I'm just going to sort of bunch these fields up so we know what they look like already when we, uh, you know, when we open our form. Uh, we sort of know um, how this form looks with the with the order information on it, and uh, and now we can go ahead and add our subform. So the easiest way to add a subform, uh, once you've got the space on there, um, you'll notice that we're adding we're going to add to the detail, and you can just drag that form right onto your uh, your main form there. And as you'll see, it creates a subform, and, and you'll see the design of your uh, little um, list form underneath. And uh, that's sort of how you can uh, drag and drop the subform onto the form. And make sure that it'll put, it might push the uh, margins out, so you might have to pull them back in like I just did there. And you might have to resize it so that it looks, you know, looks right. Um, and it usually comes with a title tag, which is what you can see here. And I just changed that to say items. So now if I just open up our form, um, now you can see, oh, okay, I've got, I've got a, 
a form down below there and, and it has a scroll bar and each of those you'll see is uh, for order ID 1 and division A and that's exactly what we wanted. Now you may be wondering how does the form understand to only show you know the the items for that particular order that's showing there and this is where you can select that outside frame of the subform and if you go to the data you'll see um, that it automatically found those two fields the order ID and division uh, to link the master and child fields so so this is very important because um, you might need to check this if you're creating your own form because if you have fields that are linking but they have slightly different names that's okay but you got to map it here in order in order for that subform to show the right records when you open it up and uh, so that automatically uh, did the uh, linkage or the uh, uh, parent child mapping or master child mapping for the uh, um, for the form and subform now we can go back into our subform and just get a little bit more real estate uh, we can get rid of that big header that was automatically created and you could go on you know for you can do all kinds of uh, cool things to make it look better and better um, I'll just do a couple here just to to make it a little bit cleaner and uh, and we can close that so now when we open it oh look there's a there's a nice list um, and uh, and now we are only seeing the order items that we want for that particular order now it's kind of redundant. You'll see that the um, the order ID and division are actually because they belong, they kind of belong to the the parent record. Um, we don't really need to see those in the subform. Um, you'll see if I scroll through here on the bottom set of controls, um, you'll see that the you know the order changes, and so the order items that belong to that also change. But you'll see that the uh, order ID and division in the list there, those those are automatically populated because of the uh, you know the parent child mapping that we did there. So if I put in a two in the order item ID as a new one, and you or you might have a an auto number in there, so you might not need to put anything in, and you you know put a new order item, say a Nerf gun or something, um, you'll you. And put a price in, you know. Then you'll see um, when you, you know, navigate off of that and it saves, you know, it's all it's automatically done the the correlation or the it's done the mapping to the uh, division and order ID. So now if we go to the subform, since we can see the order ID and division there, uh, we can actually remove those controls because we don't need to see those even though the underlying record set for the subform um, it still has those and so the mapping rem remains okay so you don't need to actually show those they're kind of redundant so you could save a little bit of space there you could do a little bit of you know design and get some real estate back on your form and then just save it and uh, now when we open it now you can see it looks a little bit nicer You've got just the order item ID um, and the order item and the price, and you could clean up your your headers there and do all kinds of stuff. But as I scroll through that, the order record set, you'll see that it changes nicely on on the subform, and that's exactly what we wanted to see there. And that is how you do a subform in Microsoft Access. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to create a subform in Microsoft Access. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet. And uh, click the bell when you see the bell. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, put those in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.